whoa, 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 what is up, white people? I hope everything's amazing for you all, as always. I'm your host, Honorable OCT, Octavius Hay, and this is the Whack Ass Podcast. With that being said, let's talk whack to him. DJ Envy has been accused of scamming people with real estate with his real estate partner, Caesar Pena. Now, Caesar, he was arrested. Um, he's got charges put against him at this point. No charges have been put against DJ Envy. However, the iHeart um, radio officers they have been raided by the FBI, and a lot of people are looking at Envy and be like, "You had to have known what was going on." Now, my opinion, what that is, Envy been having money for a long, long time. Let's let's not pretend that Envy don't do a lot of stuff. I have no. Um, doubt in my mind that Envy was just busy not knowing what was going on, probably just being the face of this this corporate uh, this this uh, I guess business uh, relationship they got, and just coming up. You need me to do a commercial. You need me at the um, you know, uh, 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 different signings and whatever. I'll be there for that. But I could one hundred percent see. How Envy would not have known if Caesar was scamming people, which again, still allegations. Um, but of course, there's a lot of DJ Envy hate, and so a lot of people are looking at this and are running with it and are trying to go at Envy, hate on them, talk about how he did this and that and that, and scamming all these people. But again, DJ Envy has not been accused of scamming anybody, and if anything, Envy himself has said. That he got money stolen from him from Caesar as well. So he's saying he's a victim. Now, like I said, this is still an ongoing investigation. And, you know, it, there's a possibility that Envy knew what, what Caesar was doing. But, like I, but, but Envy, Envy has been making money before he even met, met Caesar. You know, this real estate thing was a new thing for Envy. And he was making money off that as well. But that... That didn't start him getting bread, so I just don't see why he would, why DJ Envy would become a scammer out of nowhere when he doesn't need to be. He was already, he already had the big house with all the cars, with all the everything he else he was doing. It seems like real estate was just another hustle for him. As far as Caesar though, we see what Caesar been doing. Um, Caesar was having people invest, having multiple people invest in like the same property. He was getting loans from from banks and stuff. He was he was taking everybody money. He was um he was getting he was uh, what, what they call it borrowing from Peter to pay to, to pay Paul. Caesar was out in here in these streets, and there's more than enough evidence to show that. I know some people are saying, well, Envy had an off they they had an office right next to each other. Look, bro, that's probably one of DJ Envy's many offices. And again, I'm not trying to say, like, there's no way that Envy could be a part of this. But people need to start recognizing that you have to understand, there is a possibility that Envy just wasn't that deep into the the the, um, the real estate game. Like, he, he, he was part of it. He put, invested money. But DJ Envy got all stuff going on. He got his podcast. He got the record club. He do radio. I mean, he do DJ gigs. He got the, 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 the car line stuff he do, the, the car shows he do, and whatever else he do. Like, that's multiple things that Envy does. To believe that he would be that deep into what's going on, I mean, I guess he could be, but like I said, there's also a possibility that he just, he didn't know. He's like, yo, y- y'all the professionals, I'm the, I'm the face, I'm the big star, I'll put my name behind it, I'll put some money behind it to get some money back, but... Yeah, like I said, he doesn't necessarily know the scamming stuff that's going on. He busy. Real estate isn't all that DJ AV does, but Caesar Pena, that was a big part of what he do. And that's why he in trouble right now. And that's why he uh, got arrested. So, you know, I think it's a lot of, like I said, a lot of envy hate. But we have to look and see what the facts are showing. And so far, there have been no facts presented that say that DJ Envy had anything to do with the scamming. So let's wait and see. If, like, if DJ Envy 
was scamming people, I'm going to be right there with all of y'all. But y'all just be waiting on this dude to be... Uh, people just don't like him for whatever reason. He's a solid dude, man. He don't do nothing wrong. He got a good... You know, he, 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 he stand by his family, a family man. He, he a solid dude. I, I don't see nothing wrong with DJ Envy. And if... Like I said, if he did this, if he was scamming people, if he was stealing money from people, taking their life savings, and he was taking money from people who trusted on him and he knew he wasn't going to give nothing back, then yeah, of course, we're going to throw him under the bus. Forget DJ Envy. But until that is proven, all I know is what, what they are showing is, or what being accused, is that Cesar Pena, his business partner, who... It's not like they work hand in hand all the time together. There's a lot of evidence, you know, showing them together that looks bad on Envy. But we all know that, yo, he's the face. He's the he's the face that he, the celebrity name that you put on attached to stuff to make it sell. That don't necessarily mean that he was on the day to day operations. Until you show me that, um, until you show me that he was, I'm gonna have to go off the man's words. He said he he said he didn't know. Like I said, Envy said he got money stolen from him. So, that's my mindset on it. I ain't tripping off Envy right now. I think it was a mistake. I think that moving forward, the Breakfast Club and a lot of celebrities need to start, I guess, um, they need to start checking, seeing what, uh, who these people are that they're that, that, that they promoting and, and giving a platform to because... It is a lot of times that people will do stuff based off of what the celebrity says. So if you say, hey, this, you know, like Envy was saying, Caesar, good dude, good real estate, invest your money in him. I could definitely see a lot of people want to do that. And I can definitely see how that could be a problem for DJ Envy in a civil suit. And, and also, let's be honest, by Heart Radio, because they platform them on, on, you know, on their stations that go across the country. And then if you want to really look at it, YouTube across the world. So this could be just a, a I think maybe possibly something that uh, the backlash is so bad that it causes companies to start looking at exactly who we have on our shows, who we're platforming, who we're giving attention and time to. Because unfortunately, whether DJ Envy had anything to do with it or not, a lot of people put a lot of money into uh you know in, invested in Caesar and man came out looking like a scammer. He's he now he's done some counter lawsuits or whatever, but you know at the end of the day ain't nobody got no money back. So whether he's guilty or innocent, and it's all allegedly still because he's not being convicted, just in charge. Um you gotta look at the facts. No money's been given back. I think that DJ Envy at least morally has some type of responsibility. Again, I don't to me personally, I still don't I have not presented no, no evidence have presented to me to make me think that DJ Envy purposely scammed anybody. I think that he was just following along with somebody. He do he has multiple businesses. He's busy. He has multiple things he got going on and he thought that this dude was on the up and up. And and well, it's looking more and more like he was not. So that's my that's my two cents on it. What you think, man? You think DJ Envy is innocent? You think that he just you know fo- followed behind somebody he thought was good, or you think that DJ Envy was out here scamming people, getting their money, and, and and had no intentions of making nothing back for nobody else, and now trying to play the victim now that they got caught? Dave Chappelle has been getting some uh, flack for standing up for. Palestinian civilians who have been attacked by the Israeli Defense Force ever since the government Hamas decided to attack Israeli civilians. Now, of course, we stand with Israeli civilians. We we condemn the heinous actions of Hamas. They act like a super terrorist group. There's no love for Hamas. The actions they've held up uh, elections. The people of Gaza have not been able to have elections since 2006. These clearly radical, evil people. But I think what the world is forgetting is that the people of Gaza, 50% of them, which are children, they have not elected a Hamas since 2006. They've not been allowed to have elections. So you cannot put what Hamas' actions are on the people of Gaza. And if anything, the Israeli people 
have treated them like second-class citizens and have been committing apartheid and, and war crimes for over 50 years. So, when um, Dave Chappelle stood up for the Palestinian people, the civilians, and just said that you cannot bomb civilians, he was met with backlash from the crowd, and they told Dave Chappelle to shut the F up to make... Dave Chappelle said, no, you shut the F up. You're not going to tell me, come to my show, where you listen, where you where you paid to watch me speak, tell me shut the F up. And, you know, Israel should not be allowed to get our tax dollars to bomb civilians and essentially cause a genocide. Now, again, I know this is a touchy situation and there's a lot of nuances to this conversation. And like I keep saying, I don't want, I do, I do not want Israeli civilians to, to suffer. But I cannot in good conscience pretend like the Israeli government is not making Palestinian civilians suffer and at a worse rate. We all, you know, and everybody who had common sense collectively. We, we gasped in horror when Hamas attacked Israeli civilians and came down in uh, uh, parachutes shooting at people just having a good time as we should because that was wrong but we cannot allow Israeli people to then go ahead or, or not the civilians but the Israeli government to go and turn around and say since you guys did that we're going to be as monstrous as possible and be even more barbaric with our actions. I mean, right now, Hamas, they don't have any um, electricity, food access is down. I mean, uh, the, the water pipes have been shut off. This is, these are human beings. They're bombing this place down. I mean, you have to acknowledge what's going on and be serious. Nobody is saying that Israel can't defend itself, but you cannot attack innocent civilians. Again, 50% of uh, Gaza are, are children or minors because of the, the uh, living conditions they go through are so bad that people don't age. And one of the reasons is because it, Israeli, the Israeli government bombs them. Uh, uh, they have... Um, what you call them, Israeli terrorists or whatever it is, coming in, uh, trying to kill them, take over their homeland. I mean, it is bad out there for those people. So that's one of the things you have to actually acknowledge and recognize. And, but 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 anybody who says anything, whether it's Dave Chappelle, whether it's people in the corporate media, or whoever, if you say anything that's not 100% pro-Israel just killing these civilians, then you're called anti-Semitic, and that's just not true. You can support Israel. I support Israel. I support their right to defend themselves. I support the civilians. I support all of that. But also recognize that Palestinians are human beings too, and we have to we have to recognize them and respect them, and we cannot we cannot allow a genocide to happen, and, and allow a government, especially a government that us as U.S. me as a U.S. taxpayer, as other people U.S. taxpayers, we fund um, the money that goes to them. We have to check this stuff. We have to stop this stuff. We are the biggest superpower in the whole world. We have to, we cannot allow people to commit genocide on humans. And we have to tell people, especially our especially our allies, when they're doing something wrong, we have to check them. You cannot commit apartheid and 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 and, and, and war crimes against civilians. You if you want to go ahead in guns blazing trying to find Hamas and get your special forces and go into the city and find them that's fine but when you just dropping bombs that's hitting you know um uh residents homes and hospitals and and and, and businesses where civilians are you are in the wrong and it should not be controversial to say that that should be one of the easiest things to say we cannot allow the Israel government to um, 
treat civilians this terribly. We have to learn from the past. We have to learn from stuff like Iraq. This is what we did in Iraq. We we uh, villainize the people so bad and make them seem like monsters that we were fine with destroying them, destroying their civilization, destroying their world. And all that did was lead to multiple years of wasted time where we end up coming back with nothing because as soon as we got out of war, the terrorists took back over. Look, I understand the Israeli people. And I just, I want that to be stressed out. We know how bad that, um, what Hamas did. We know that there were innocent people. We understand you have loved ones that are trapped, that are still being held hostage. And we are for you. But you cannot treat a people so bad for almost 60 years and think that nothing is going to happen. And at some point, you have to look to your government and say, you have to stop treating these people like this. So they can stop hating us so we can potentially move forward with peace. And so I stand with Dave Chappelle. I understand what he was saying. And he's right. He's not wrong. Hamas is evil. But the Israeli government's response is not good either. These are all human beings. And we have to remember that. And the moment we forget that, then we forget our own humanity. But let me know what you think. And are you somebody that's like support Israel 100% no matter what? Or are you somebody who recognizes the nuance and knows, hey, Hamas is evil, but the Palestinian people are still human beings at the same time? Jada Pinkett Smith has been making y'all so mad these last, um, I guess, week, this last week and a half. So Jada, she dropped a new book where she talked a lot about her relationship with Tupac. Uh, gave us some information about what her and Will was going through, saying they had actually been separated. And I know when they did the Red Table Talk, her and uh, Jada and Will talked about how they were separated at one point, but they were back together. But apparently, no, they were, they stayed separate the whole time. And, you know, Jada was talking about she was surprised that Will called her his wife when he slept Chris Rock because... According to Jada, Will had not referred to her as his wife for a while. She's like, what, 2016, she says. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of disrespect going on, I guess. Uh, there are some people who are saying she's speaking her truth. I'm like, yeah, you're speaking her truth, but if you're going to commit to keeping, you know, the last name Smith and, you know, essentially commit to keeping the marriage going, I think it's crazy to go ahead and... Um, spill the inner workings of which whatever y'all going through and i also think it's crazy for jada to keep on talking about will i mean uh keep on talking about tupac because the the, the women who actually were with tupac ain't talking about tupac right now um now jada even came out and said that tupac you know he allegedly proposed to her uh, there was a lady on uh, TikTok who came out and kind of debunked those rumors and said that there's no way that Tupac could have proposed to Jada because Jada said that uh, she went and saw Tupac at Rikers and uh, and the TikTok lady pretty much broke it down saying that he was the the time that he would have been at Rikers because he was only there for a small amount of time. Um, Timeline wise, it's it's it's, it's, it's Maybe not impossible, but very unlikely that Jada would have been able to go there since her and um, Will were, were hitting off around that same time and Tupac was proposing to other women. Now, what I say is maybe she got it wrong. Maybe it wasn't at Rikers. Maybe it was, um, I forgot, wherever he went after Rikers. But it, it, I mean, is it possible that he could have he could have proposed to her? Yeah, I don't think nothing crazy with that. Again, what I say is. Uh, Jada is saying that her and Will are trying to make this work and that they've been separated but after the, after Will slapped Chris that was like a turning point and they really want to try to get back to being a couple I would say well, why do you continue to talk about stuff that would embarrass this man and regardless of what you think about what Jada is saying whether you think it's her right to say it or not um, whether you mad at her by saying it or not Will Smith 
as a person, his his he's taking a hit. He's now he's no longer looked at with such high regard as he once was. For the most part. Again, you can say the new Jada had every right to say what she wanna say, that's fine. But men are looking at Will like, wow, you wildin', bro. And Will Smith used to be like one of like the dudes that do that men would look at like that's that guy. You know, somebody to aspire to be. You know, Will had mad respect. That has gone for the most part. And so whatever you think about what Jade is saying, there's been an impact on Will Smith's credibility as a man. He looks like a chump. And when she talked about Tupac and how great Tupac was and how they were soulmates and, oh, even though they didn't have no sexual chemistry and talks about, oh, um, Chris Rock won to ask her out and how she, you know, she, uh, Will Smith ain't done this and Will Smith ain't done that and he, she ain't been turned on by him. All this stuff she openly talks about all the time. That does leave some type of an impact when you as a, a grown man waking up every day and championing a woman who continuously says how terrible you are. Now, Will Smith wrote a book too, but Will Smith wasn't talking about how terrible Jada was. If anything, he had Stockholm Syndrome. He was talking about how all the good things he tried to do for her were actually bad things because they were selfish. They weren't for her. She has completely masterminded this man to think that he is the worst person ever and that everything she talks about is fair because that's from her heart and anything he's ever done to try to show her how much he cares about her is really just him being selfish and only thinking about himself she cold-blooded she's a pimp daddy mac and will is just like i said he's in the stockholm syndrome he is ho ho <laughs> for real and he don't got no type he don't have no voice to, to stand up against anything she's saying and unfortunately he will, Will Smith will always try to appease Jada and show her that he I, I, I can be better I can be better and she will always use that against him so that she can control Will he'll never live up to what Will Smith will never live up to what Jada wants, but she will always manipulate Will Smith to try to live up to what she wants. And unfortunately, she's doing it in public for all, all of us to see. This could have been some private stuff. But according to, you know, Jada, shoot, I got to sell some books. They got to make some money. The simple thing for Will to do would be to divorce her, but for whatever reason, he won't. And that's what it is. This is what we have to deal with, I guess, for the rest of whatever. Jada coming out and embarrassing Will and Will accepting it. Talking about how great she is. It's sad, but I don't feel bad for Will. Because there's only so many times you can do me like this. You can do me like this maybe one time. And I'm going to come out and be like, you know what, I'm done with you. Maybe she got some dirt on Will. Maybe she knows some stuff about Will Smith that we don't know about. Maybe Will is being blackmailed and is staying in a relationship where he's being treated bad. But also maybe he just trying to win her over. Which, if you ask me, that's more likely. That's what it seems like. It seems like Will's just trying to win Jade over. And he thinks that if he plays a nice guy long enough that eventually Jada will appreciate him. Again, that's just that's how I'm reading the situation. Based off the information that they are openly giving to us. But I don't know. But yeah, let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think that um, Will is just allowing this to go on because he's trying, hoping that he can win Jada back? Do y'all think that Will don't care no more and he just... He, he don't want to get divorced for more reasons. Do y'all think that Jada's holding some information that keeps them from getting divorced because she don't want to she, she don't lose access to that Will Smith name? I mean, let me know what's up. 
Well, that's the show for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in and taking in this whack wisdom. I hope that you tune in next week to get a little bit more from me. Of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you listen on YouTube. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, please make sure to like, review, comment, everything you got to do to support us on those platforms. Uh, with that being said, this is the Whack Ass Podcast, and I am whacking off. It's the Whack Ass Podcast. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me. It's the Whack Ass Podcast. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me. Yeah. Talk whack to me. Talk whack to me.